Hello everybody and welcome. We're going to have a look at Multigo being used as a data discovery tool for investigative journalism. However, um, very similarly, any sort of online, which, we, which is the major discussion here, any online investigation, research, intelligence gathering, or even due diligence, there are a lot of synergies with this process. So it's while the emphasis on tonight's discussion is invest investigative journalism, it can be used and utilized in other professional fields. So just briefly for those who are not fully a, a fay or familiar with online research, there's still a lot of question marks about research. What are we actually talking about? We're talking about open data and information. This information we can collect from physically even, not everything is online. Um, things such as company registrars in some countries, they're just not available online. We physically got to go there and collect that data if we want to find something out about a particular company or its directors, shareholders, that type of stuff. But for this discussion, we're going to just focus in for now on information that can be collected online. Where does this take us and wh why are we talking about this? We find data points all over the internet or the World Wide Web as, as it should be called to pivot off. In other words, we pivot from one information point to another and we pivot to another and so we go on until we can collect enough information to what we call pivot to analysis. So once we have sufficient information, we can then start what, what you can also call the ACE process analysis, collation, evaluation and verification process to formulate information products. So information until it's been analyzed and verified and gone through that process is no use. So we've got to go through that process. It then gives us an information product which can be media, investigative media articles, can be an intelligence report, can be an investigations report, or even a due diligence report. So there are many, many options there for us. But the point is, as I've said, it has to go through that analysis. What we can use to assist us with this is Multigo. And those of you that are not familiar with Multigo, Multigo is a visualization program. It helps us to take a lot of text or data and be able to formulate it in some sort of visualization, which is easier for us to look at, provide context to it, and give our information depth. Now this particular graph here, that's what the Multigo um, visualizations are called. They are called graphs. And this one that we're looking at is the one of the Brussels attack involving ISIS, members of ISIS. And this I did a couple of years ago with this sort of idea, can we see whether these attacks could be prevented? And we used Multigo extensively in that research to be able to get there. But the one that we're talking about this evening is OCCRP, the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. And they've come out with a data tool called Aleph. And this is the website access point to it. It contains a lot of data. For those that are not familiar with it, I'd encourage you to go along, have a look at it, try it out. There's plenty of information out there. Some of this information is being collated through leaks or articles they may have done, investigations they've done. Other parts of this information is continuously being updated through their update processes and being supplemented on a periodic or regular basis to be able to be fairly fresh and new information. But really, as you're going to see shortly, there's a lot of information here. So go and have a look at it in on their website and uh, you can just Google this. It'll take you directly to a link for the website, play around with it. And then as we're going to go into the Multigo process now, you're going to see how we interrogate this data, and pull some of it back to be able to, to utilize it. Okay, so for those of you that are not familiar with Multigo, this is the main page as you open up the tool and it provides you a bunch of data categories. These effectively are searches that one can perform or a tool that can um, you can select to perform a search for you. So you've instance got 
blockchains, breaches and leaks. You've got in pricing. So for if you just wanted to use free tools or a free trial or pay for them or whatever. And then you've got useful for teams. In other words, what is your team's main focus? For instance, like we're talking about investigative journalists. So we could search that and it'll just bring up um, these transforms, which I'm going to describe shortly, that could be applicable to what you're trying to search for. But we're just going to leave it as it is at the moment. And then down here are the transforms which are located in the transform hub. Or, and here they call it the transform hub partners. So some of these transforms are developed by Multigo themselves or by other external parties. You get paid ones and you get free ones, as I've said. And there are a whole lot. You can go down and have a look at all of them. May, there's a good possibility not all would be applicable to what you are attempting to do or what you're trying to research or investigate. But I'm sure amongst these you will find something that can assist you. And so what is a transform? A transform is a script written primarily in Python, but they do use other languages. I'm not going to go too technical about that. And these scripts are designed to go off onto the Internet and search data for us and bring it back and that we're able to analyze that information to form a picture. So in the tool itself, on the left hand side over here, we've got what is called the palette and you can see all the different now the transforms are coming up as they as their individual items i'm just going to minimize those some of them and we're not going to get into all of them there's just too many we're just going to deal with the occrp's um, elif transforms for today's discussion to see what that can do but just to kick off just to give you a feel of um, multigo this middle section is the graph as I was saying in, in the introduction, along the top is various items that assist you with your research. The important one often is the number of results. We've got 12, 50, 256, and 10,000 results. If you put it on 10,000, it gives you a warning because it can become a little bit overwhelming. There are bigger versions of Multigo, so if your data sets are going to be massive, one can take it up to what is called the Multigo XL or extra large. This is the Multigo Classic and it gives us a lot of results on its own. So again, depending on your usage, but for now, we're just going to leave it at 12 results. And then on the right hand side, you've got an overview window. You've got machines and that's uh, machines are automated scripts that run out and collect a lot more data. And then you've got the detail view, which we'll have a look at just now, and then property views and the hub transform inputs. For this discussion, those are not important for now. We've got just Lane Maxwell. She's been featured in the media quite a bit. We all know why. So I'm just going to use her as our sort of example today that you get an idea what this can do. So here I've, I've, I've right clicked on her. I'm just using what they call the phrase. Everything that Multigo uses like this is the is a phrase entity we can get a company entity we can get a document entity and then many many others as you will see shortly let me just delete those out uh, we don't need those right now because that's those will come up on their own as we progress through this so right click bring up the transform list we're going to search on just lane and we go into what they call the standard transforms he has the whole full list on that. It can search for email addresses, files, GPS coordinates, telephone numbers, etc. But we're just going to deal with a standard website search as if you would sit down at your computer and search via Google or Bing. In this case, Multigo makes use of the Bing API, which is very useful. It brings back sufficient results for us to work off and be able to pivot to other information. So let's just run that. Just give it a chance to run and it starts to return some results for us and there we go and what these are the www indicates a website so this is what it's done as if you were searching at your desk as a search engine you would get results in your browser reflecting probably the same as these okay we've only got 12 but you probably get a bit more it's the same sort of thing it's just putting it and placing it on the visual in the visualization process for us to have a look at and go through. So 
what you're looking at is possibly 12 different browsers or 12 results within your browser and we're just going to select these we're going to select cnn let's select new york daily news the guardian and the daily mail just those four and so we want to extract as if it was your browser the results from within those websites to tell us what we're looking at so we just right click again because we want to bring up the transform list which is the scripts and we just go down to urls so show search engine results so it'll just bring back those results that contain just lane maxwell and we'll have a look at these and there we go here's a whole lot of results as you can see at the bottom and we can start working with these URLs there. Those are the ones that we're going to focus on. And just that you know, for instance, here we have inmates had to polish floor. So we want to know why would this article actually be relevant to just Lane. From within Multigo, you can open it up in your browser to have a look and make sure you are looking at something that is relevant to your investigation or your research. So here up comes the article. There's a picture. So we know it's her um, and it's the Metropolitan detention center in brooklyn so this is more than likely an article about it but interestingly enough this picture let me just show you something because of multigo's dynamic usage let's just have a look at this quickly we can extract that picture out now so let's take a hypothetical scenario we didn't know who just lane maxwell was we didn't know what she looked like it's part of the investigation so straight away we can have a look and see if there's an image that we can attach it to our investigation and once we get this, this result, and it brings back the result of two images from that article. And if we have a look here, that's that image of her that we've just seen a while ago in the browser. And you can reverse search images and so on in Multigo. But let's get back to why we're here. Let's select these URLs. And what we're going to do now is extract, remember what I said earlier, entities. We want to know about people, locations, possibly companies. Anything that is useful and relevant to our research or investigation, we go down to two entities by IBM Watson and we run that transform and allow Multigo to bring back those entities for us because that's where we want to start our work and work from that basis. And this is where I often use this as my starting point in any research as I would probably anybody would with any search engine browser and this just puts it into context for us and it makes it a lot easier to have a look with the visualization process and we're not dealing with tons and tons of data or text data for that fact so it's given us france florida manhattan those locations may all be relevant to us it's put in prince andrew there bill clinton um, president clinton and then over here just lane maxwell jeffrey epstein so straight away if you're going into unknown territory this has already contextualized our information and we've been busy for a couple of minutes that's how quick we can get results on this so let's go back to just lane maxwell now we're going to go into the aleph transforms and start using those so let's go into the this is the whole list of aleph transforms we can look up all sorts of information here but just to give you an idea we're not going to do all of them we go into company registries and here you can see there's a long list of the different company registries that can be searched via this route in a couple of minutes not even a couple of minutes in a couple of seconds so let, let those run and it's starting to bring some results back for us there we go what have we got here we've got bahama companies and we've got uk companies house so again hypothetically if we were dealing with an unknown subject person here you can see our results are starting to give us her full name so now we know her full identity which also makes it a lot easier for us to form an identity for this person sorry about that and what we're going to do now is just interrogate these uk company house data and have a look how she or what is she associated to we we'll just right click on that and we now selected a different set of transforms to run we're going to do get all relationships just allow that to run and this will bring back as to what her position 
may be within these companies and we can start working on those there we go so down here it's telling us ownership director ownership director so what we're going to do we're just going to select all of those like that and we'll just zoom in a little bit that we there we go they selected and we right click once again we want to bring up our transforms and we'll do all relationships again just allow it to run okay and it comes back with company name so now we know that she was involved with these companies we just quickly take those again and we go and do all relationships again we want to see who is related to these companies in the form of ownership or directors we know we've already established through this exercise that she definitely is but we want to see if there are any others and we've got a whole lot it's what it's brought back is a lot of positions for us and it's just Lane Maxwell in this case nothing new there and more than likely for the others it would also be her I'm not go too deeply into those what we can also do is look for addresses we want to know because addresses can be very important in an investigation so we're just going to pull back the addresses for for these businesses and let's have a look at those there we've got some addresses there so addresses are important so let's just zoom out a bit here in a couple of minutes we've been able to extract a lot of information that gives us a platform to launch our as i said in in the introduction to find pivot points we've got so much already we know what companies we've got some addresses okay in this instance i realize that these addresses are probably to company agents or people that look after secretarial services but in the event that we were looking for addresses that are relevant to our investigations these are certainly kickoff points information we've collected very quickly let's move on to something else now as it often happens in an investigation or research or due diligence we may stumble across a name and this person could be a politically involved person and we don't know much about them yes i've just put omar bashir i realize that his full name is omar al bashir but we that's the real reason that we want to go down this road is just to show you with Multigo how we can start to sort this one out and be able to gain that relevancy that we we're looking for i'm just going to keep this example short so we just got a name um omar bashir let's just look in some company registries that whole long list comes up again we just run that again it's the uk company house we can take a few of these i'm not going to take them all we've got bashir omar is that a different person is it not is it the same person we're looking for but we run these and we go to relationships again we go back to our relationships let's get all relationships and we run that transform again because we want to bring up those entities telling us how they are associated to the business whether it's as an owner or a director and there we go that's all brought back for us and we've got secretary company secretary we've got a couple of entities here that refer to these businesses and then again we run those because here what we want to establish is a how is this person related to that business to that business but also who else is involved in those businesses those might be key to us at the end of the day okay so what we've got here is company names this is great so now we know what companies these people are involved with and here we've got some results it just says company may not be very useful and again we can just open that in Aleph and just have a look what is going on here let's just close just lane just to see so you can immediately go to the source to see what this information is about so let's just have a look at that quickly allow it to load up and we've got unknown it's a bit vague we've got omar bashir we don't know if this guy is related to our inquiry we can leave those for now and we select the ones where we've actually got company names we take that one Savior food Savior foods rodeo ranch um, OBR and let's have a look and here's another one over here there's we run that relationships again see what that brings back okay 
and we get some results we've got some more directors and ownership we just select all those again and we start looking looking for people so we want to identify these people Let's there we go, run relationships again okay so it's starting to bring back some more people for us and when we look into them we see we've got a bunch of new names how are these people involved what is their association to uh, Omar Bashir there's some more coming on it hadn't quite finished and that we can start to investigate now and we've got GA secretaries limited which is normally some sort of agent to a business and but in any event we've got some nice information to work off the other thing I want to do again is just let's take these companies over here and let's run those two addresses so go to that properties we go into properties we can run address okay so it's starting to bring back some results for us and pertinently are these addresses relevant to our investigation we've got two addresses from those companies what we can do now is is we just select some of these people entities so we just take these that one and some over here let's take some over here that didn't really come back with any results and see if we get lucky as well so let's run these two addresses because now we want to see if they tie back to what we're looking for and we'll just go address there we go and I think I saw 293 Granville Road from one of the companies as well let's just go down here yes there we go so what you can do is select that then go up to these here for example select that select that and we can merge them together and a tie is in fact more let's select that one and that one let's just merge them all together that tidies up our graph and we don't have multiple uh, ent entities of the same address and just bring them all together into one merged entity which just makes it tidier at the end of the day so we just merge it and we leave that as it is and just go okay and it starts to make things look a little bit more tidier we just sort this out that it's not all over the show and we go back to that address there so now what we can also do in this case is search on that address let's have a look what do we find in terms of that address let's just go company registries for example and see if that it may bring back duplicate results it may bring back more results because we need to know what is going on at that address is it an agent address or is it an actual business address of some sorts so here's a bunch of names that's come back it's again thrown out our Omar Bashir and it gives us as I say the new names this result came up earlier Sara Riaz now come up again associated by the address so we've almost got a verification factor built into that so it's very nice from that point of view and then just one last search on Omar Bashir in terms of his political status we can go down to leaks for example and see what that gives us and then leaks we've got all the well-known leaks that have been revealed in the in the media and we can use those to run with and see if that brings back any results for us so there we go we've got a bunch of leaks so from here you can here you've got one for Khartoum which is more than likely on Dakar um, that was in his part of the world so we can open that in Aleph and see what the actual source documentation gives us in terms of results and relevancy and for the purpose of the context of whatever we are researching let's give that a chance to load up and there we go so here we got it this was a leaked some sort of leaked document and here we, there's Bashir mentioned in there so this might be very relevant from here you can start extracting other information into Multigo so there we go again very quickly you've managed to build out quite a lot of information and let's move on to another example here we have a company Afro service again this can happen your client 
or you sit with the investigation, the name pops out, where does this name fit? Why do I have it? Is it relevant to my investigation? Again, we just hit a right click to bring up the transform and let's start with company registries first to see if that gives us any result and if it does does it fit into what we are researching and immediately it tells us this is Mozambique and any of you that have done research and due diligence in Africa it can often be very difficult and it's rare that we have company data online of African businesses apart from South Africa many other countries in Africa don't have this data online so again we're just going to do very quickly for the purpose of completeness of this particular example we're just going to go for relationships we want to find the directors of this business so starting just with a name we already got a location and we're just going to do you've all followed this routine makes for excellent memory muscle so here we go again and we should be able to identify the directors of the business okay so it's simple enough um, I just thought I'd show you this because this could be a small component of your investigation and just because you've got a name not all is lost and one can go and use the LF data to discover some more okay so in this particular example we're going to search by country you may just have something relevant to a country and you're not too sure what can be brought out or extracted from that and we want to understand maybe you're looking for political figures or something untoward that Aleph may have stored and you want to get some sort of relevancy there we can start with sanction lists are any politicians or business people or anybody for that matter of fact that has been sanctioned from a particular country so here what do we have we've got a name we've actually got a company name Machada Limited Machanda, uh, Machanga Limited my apologies you've got commercial impact so all of these or maybe not all but some of these may be relevant to an investigation and then we've also got where they have been sanctioned Yes, some of these sanction lists, are, I'm fully aware, do repeat themselves in different places, but still, it gives us a sort of designation to where this has occurred. We can go back to, for, for instance, the leak example that we did with Omar Bashir, and we just look for leaks in a long and big area of information. Are there any leaks or leaked data pertaining to Uganda in that information? And comes back with some results and we can now start to figure in on those as before I said to you and mentioned to you you can just if you want to find the source document you just go open an Aleph and it brings back that particular leak that we can understand how it fits in to this research or may not even fit in so you can eliminate it out from any further inquiries okay um, there we go northern Uganda notes 2007 and it's got the whole issue as to what went on there the last example I want to show you again is of a company but this company is based in Europe and we're going to take a slight step up or different angle to this and the Multigo guys were very kind enough to show me this that we can have a look at this as another option to find information about companies and the first one I'm going to start with is customs declaration so this information should give you some idea as to what this company has declared with cross-border transactions so we just allow that to run and we get some we get some results from that and from a mere name of a business it starts to come back with slightly different names which could be subsidiaries or associate companies but it's giving us some additional options to this and we can start to research those the other one that's quite interesting we can go into actual start to have a look at contracts that the company might be associated with so we just have a look look up in procurement there's a long list again as with a lot of LF data there's a tremendous amount of information we can interrogate we allow that to run and let's see what this finds for us and it comes back with a result 
There's something tied to tenders electronic daily. So we repeat this process and let's go down into here. And we want to establish sort of um, procurement agreements between different companies or actual contracts. And we bring that up. We bring up the list of procurement searches. We allow this to run. And it starts to associate itself to a number of other entities. And it gives us, let's just sort this out quickly. Right, it makes it a bit clearer. So you can see, start seeing the associations. These companies were originally there in our initial search. But the other thing that it's brought up is this particular contract. What is this about? Let's open this in ALF just to see what we're looking at. And if it, again, if it's relevant. And it tells us it's spare parts for Danish Defense Machine Gun M62. So again, this starts to bring some nice information back for us and we can we can go back to the companies here and then we do the same thing let's just take a couple of these companies um no particular, i'm trying to be as random as possible let's just take those and we can search into those first we can start with customs declarations in terms of cross-border data or transactions And that's brought back quite a lot of information that we can have a look at. What we can also look for now, and here's a massive association down here, and very quickly, just through the sort of procurement contract process or cross-border process, we're starting to find a lot of associations. Even down here, we've seen some different aspects that can now be pivoted off to go and investigate. Okay, so we can see all this coming together. Let's go back to where we actually started with all this. We want to go um, back to the contract issue. And here we find the contract. I just want you to take note. We're looking at this contract that we initially found at the beginning when we started the procurement search. And we found the contract, remember it was for spare parts. We want to have a look at who the authority was that issued this contract. And we just go down. Here, here we go contract authority and this should establish for us who was the issuing party or the issuing authority for this contract it brings us back to the Danish defense acquisition and logistics organization you can do a whole lot of searches on that and if it is of relevance to your investigation which it could be especially when it comes to to arms um, type procurement we can go and have a look at all the contracts this entity has issued to whoever and then delve into those and investigate them in more detail so and remember we're only going to get 12 results because i'm just keeping this simple there we go so you can go along and investigate each and every one of these contracts or go and find more whichever applies to your investigation but i just want to go back to the company entity and what we want to know here is what contracts have been awarded to this business because remember we linked it to that initial contract are there more so let's have a look at that so we go down into our contracts awarded transform allow that to run and it brings back a result for us there we go over here contracts awarded and then we want to know some more information about those and remember, we can always go back into the source documentation to establish what are these actually applied to and, you know, what the relevancy is about that all the time. So we're just going to the contract search and it should bring us back a couple more results. And there we go. And it's about ammunition. All right. I think and, the, and so we can go on really, um, as we all know, OSINT can be a bit of a rabbit hole. And we need very clear hypotheses to to really do a good investigation. So we need to know what we're trying to um, acquire in the sense of information to prove to that hypothesis. But again, 
here you can see here we have a business we found their contracts this is not for all businesses the, the Aleph data won't have this type of data for everybody but I'm just showing you how this can be done and how much more it can offer your investigation. I hope I've been able to give you an idea what Maltigo can do if you've never worked with it before and even if you have what the new transform set for the Aleph data can also do for us and those that have worked with Aleph da data in the past including myself there's so much of it and it makes analysis quite difficult at times and quite challenging and that at least Maltigo turns this sort of the other way around that we're going and finding the data we're able to interrogate it when it's relevant we can go and find the source information to substantiate what we're saying if you're interested in trying out Maltigo right at the top is the URL for the trial version will give you 14 days of the complete and full version for, for you to play around with if you need any more information you can follow me on twitter and my email address and our training platform right at the bottom should you want to do any of our training we've got a, a free course on case file which is multigo's little brother very useful tool still very powerful um, so we've got that and then we've got the option of some paid courses